Good morning. It's Friday, August 20th. <clears throat> Hard to believe we're moving along so quick, but it is, so might as well enjoy the ride. <clears throat> we uh, continue to stay on the front lines of the satanic attack of uh, Christianity all over the world right now and sure seems like the devil is uh, trying to gain some more control and uh, we're just not going to let it happen. We will stand and stand our ground and be faithful and be honorable and serve the Lord and trust him and uh, it doesn't matter what the lunatics are doing. We're going to do what we're supposed to do, and we definitely need to pray for brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world, and definitely they're in Afghanistan right now. Uh, what what uh, challenges they are facing uh, is unbelievable. I read an article this morning, you know, and, and there again, you read articles and you don't know what's true, what's not. Um, <clears throat> but I read an article this morning saying that the State Department is charging uh, Americans to fly them out of Kabul and uh, $2,000 a person. So I wonder where that money's going. I I'm, I'm sure that's going in some uh, fund to help the poor and uh, not to buy somebody a yacht um, somewhere. I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure it's not cash. You know, they, I'm sure they would try to give the people a receipt for their giving. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> anyway, it's a uh, crazy days we're living in, but God has chosen us to be here during this time. And so let's be faithful and let's walk with him and let's uh, uh, be what uh, what uh, God wants us to be. That That was, I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, yesterday, uh, early evening, around, what was it, 5.30 or so, uh, had quite a little storm come through brush and uh, a good little rain and then wind blew and, and uh, it's kind of crazy. I saw towards the church, it blew over a few trees along the way. Somebody said Keensburg got thumped this morning already and uh, so... A lot of hail down by Roggin yesterday. Uh, they can keep the hail. I just had $9,000 worth of hail damage fixed on my truck. Uh, crazy. So, but um, <clears throat> anyway, it's a good day. And I uh, hope you guys are having a good day. Beautiful day now. Sun's out. Uh, it's got some moisture on the grass. And uh, so a lot to be thankful for. So, um <clears throat> so I was reading the Proverbs first thing uh, in in uh, my devotions and kind of have a system of things that I do. So, but always starts in Proverbs with uh, one of Chapel's uh, devotionals, and and I was in Proverbs twenty verse twenty three. Uh, Diverse weights are an abomination un, unto the Lord. Diverse various weights and. Uh, in this, uh, talking about false weights, you know, they they uh, were not um, uh, honest in in that's that's how they measured many things, right? So measure out food, measure out coin, you know, all of that. So they uh, would measure these things, and and so these diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good, and. There, there are always those that are chasing after the almighty daughter, dollar and they're, they are uh, constantly looking for the easy way and the get rich uh, quick schemes. And uh, God says there is something about hard work. And uh, yes, we know it's part of the curse, but we also know that God blesses uh, those who are not lazy and those who are diligent and uh, we we need to go out, we need to work hard, and we need to be honest in, in giving out a day's work every day. And uh, uh, we all need to be doing that. And so let our work be honest every day and stop looking for these easy ways. And, and, and uh, don't be fooled and tempted by that. You know, I, I've seen 
through the years in the ministry too. I, 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 I've seen people who, who try to get pastors involved in these things just because of, I don't know, the influence they have over their congregation. So they look at that whole group that they could, you know, make money on or something. And um, you know, I think preachers really need to pay attention to their calling and just stay focused on serving the Lord and being the shepherd and, and serving the Lord full time and and quit quit worrying about um, uh, making the almighty dollar and, and know that, look, if we're, if we're doing God's will, then God's going to take care of things for us and let's just be um, serving him. And I just watch, I just watch too many pastors who get caught up in these schemes or they get caught up in their, in their secular work and they, so many have walked away from the ministry and you're either called to it or you're not. And if you're called to it, then you better stay to the calling that God has called on your life and, and, uh, uh, and don't do things that jeopardize that and would, uh, cause you to, to, to stumble and cause you to, to lose the ministry. So be careful with that. And, and with that, then we'll be back to Proverbs here, uh, a little bit later too, but I was, uh, <clears throat> I was um, reading about Nehemiah, and I was reading that, and I actually just finished up Nehemiah uh, and just finished up Esther this morning, but uh, uh, Spurgeon, in one of my devotions that I do, Spurgeon was talking about Nehemiah this morning, and it's a good point. He was talking about in chapter 3 where Nehemiah was repairing the gates in, in the wall, and there in Jerusalem, and and how important the, the gates are because the gates are the ones that allow things in and allow things out. Right. And, uh, it, and, and I just, yeah, I spiritualized this a little bit, but in thinking about this, as I was reading this, I, I need to be careful of, uh, what I open the gates to my heart to and, and what I open the gates of my eyes to and, into my mind, into my thinking, right? I mean, we need to, there, there are, there is, walls are necessary for all, all kinds of things. And, and there are, there are walls and there are borders that uh, we need to have in our own lives and, and to protect ourselves. And uh, it doesn't matter if you get peer pressure from others or if there are certain things that you need to avoid uh, because it brings some kind of a temptation to your life to not do what God is telling you to do, then put up that border, put up the gate, and, and don't let it in. And so we we need to um, we need to make sure and and repair the gates and and keep those gates up. And sometimes we find that you know in our lives we're just getting involved in the world. We're we're involved in, you know, making a living, whatever, you, you know, you're, in, you're involved in raising your children, uh, just the everyday uh, 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 rut of the day or whatever. And, and pretty soon you look up and you, you start evaluating spiritually and you find out that your gate is in disrepair. I mean, you have let the gate down, you're letting all kinds of junk into your own heart and your own mind, in your home, in your children, you know, attitudes, uh, I, I mean, w whatever, you know, we, we need to um, rebuild those gates. And that, that was just a, a good one for me today to, to remember, uh, hey, get out of there. I'll tell you what, this dog, he, Thane's dog is so ornery. He, uh, I'll watch a hunting video and when he sees the deer or the elk on the the screen he goes nuts and berserk barking at the tv you know trying to uh, uh, kill the deer or whatever but now he's in here snooping around seeing what he can get into so <clears throat> but gotta watch him all the time right <clears throat> and it kind of like the devil right the, the devil is constantly creeping around seeing what he can stir up and uh we we just need to best thing for me to remember is today just do the very next right thing. And, and what what it is that God shows me to do, just do that, focus on that, and and uh, keep my testimony by putting up the gates, putting up the walls, and, and 
being careful of what I allow in inside that. And then I read in Esther, and I finished, like I said, I, I finished Esther today, and um, I just thought this was impactful on the, the last verse of chapter 10 uh, of Esther. This is the, the last verse of the book, right? And it talks about Mordecai's testimony. For Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people and seeking peace to all his seed. I, I mean, that, um, you know, that, what, what a great testimony uh, of, of Mordecai. And I just, I just wrote in my own journal, you know, let that be my testimony too. Not, not focused on myself, not, you know, even as a pastor, you, you don't focus on building your ministry. The, the church is God's and uh, we're the shepherd. Just be busy going about doing God's business and, and let God uh, do what, what it is that God wants to do. And, and actually, I, when I was reading Nehemiah, it kind of goes along uh, with this. Remember the, the prayer of Nehemiah several times through Nehemiah was uh, Lord remember me for the 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 good that that I was doing for Israel and and so you know we we're in such a, a sin sick world and in a selfish world and a humanistic world that everybody's telling us we need to focus on ourselves all the time and and it, it, it's just it's not biblical I I'm sorry it's just not biblical to to be thinking about all of that. And and yes, we need to self-care. Yes, I know. We need to have self-care. We need to we we need to uh, take a vacation every once in a while. But good grief. You don't have to have a vacation every uh, every third weekend of the month, okay? You you don't have to take off, you know, uh, uh, anyway. So, uh we're so focused on recreation and so focused on self-help and so selfish that we forget that our calling is to serve God. And guess what? If we're gonna serve God, you're gonna serve people. You can't just go hide out somewhere and and block everybody away from you and think that you're biblical and right in doing that. You're not. And God doesn't want that. God wants us to get out and God wants us to seek the benefit of others and help others and, and walk, you know, to help others walk with the Lord and and focus on those things. And, and you'll find out that a lot of your own problems will go away when you're focused on, on helping others. So anyway, you know, I, I, it's another one of those fights against culture, right? But we need to, and, and we need to set up a different standard uh, for how we live. So, and then uh, along with that, how do we do that? Well, you, you need to stay humble. And, and how do you stay humble? Well, one of those ways is to keep your tongue because it, it says in verse Proverbs 21, 23, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Boy, I need, I need to, I probably need to have Teresa take her cricket thing that she has and, and put that verse on the coffee pot. I mean, that's probably the, the most used uh, article uh, that I use around the house is that coffee pot. So every time I pour a cup of coffee, uh, I see whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles and how we need to guard our tongue. And, but then the very next verse says, proud and haughty scorner is his name who dealeth in proud wrath. And we, we need to, and, and I mentioned this yesterday and, and it seemed like God was, was definitely, that was the theme yesterday uh, of my, my devotion for me was uh, walk humbly. You know, we, we need to walk humbly. And, um, and it, uh, again here, uh, we, we need to walk humbly. And because it says proud and haughty scorner is his name who dealeth in proud wrath. And so let, let's, uh, Let's be careful. Remember the proverb too, where I believe it says that uh, in in my own translation, but I believe that uh, all contention comes from pride. 
Uh, I mean, I, I uh, and that's not the that's not how the verse is stated, but it it I believe it means that. So um, think about all the contention that'd be uh, taken care of if we would walk humbly instead of proudly. And so um, pride is not a good quality. Okay. Remember that pride is not a good quality to have. And so, uh, self-confidence is, is probably not a real good quality because that that's you're, you're, you're robbing God of, of what he's doing because you, you can remember the basketball player that was going to use Philippians 413. So they ended up allowing him to use part of that. I can do all things. Well, that that's, no, you can't. You just can't do all things, okay? But whatever you're dealing with in life, as a believer, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And so we need to give Christ the glory. We need to give God the honor and 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 understand that, that we walk humbly. And if we have self-confidence, it's because I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And you can walk confidently then. And that's good. And and we ought to, but it's not trusting in yourself. Don't ever trust in yourself in, in your flesh, because then you're you're robbing God of the glory that He wants in your life. And we need to we just need to realize that and realize that we're needy people. And so stay humble. Keep your tongue. And and then I read this one too. And I don't know, I'm half afraid I'm gonna get challenged on this today, just because so much of the devotion today was on this. Psalm 37, verse 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. You know, it's the humble that's going to have peace in their lives. This world is not at peace and Satan is stirring it up. That's why, look, this, this whole thing is satanic. It, it is. I mean, we have to, we have to realize that the, the COVID thing and all this junk that's going on is satanic. And People can think I'm crazy, but it's worldwide. We're, we're not talking about just Americans have lost their minds. I mean, the whole world has lost their minds and and has made demands upon people that you never thought would happen. And it's worldwide. We're not talking about just here in this in America. We're talking about worldwide. It, it is satanic what has taken place. And so what do we do? Well, we do the same thing here as someone in Australia that's a believer should do also. And same thing that, that a believer in, in Afghanistan ought to do also is you get up in the morning and you thank God for another day and, and you ask the Lord for protection and you ask the Lord for wisdom and, and you, you seek to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit of God today and seek to do his will in your life today. And that's what we do worldwide right now. And how do we how do we fight the onslaught of Satan and his demons? You walk with the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you and empower you. And 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 he does and and he takes care of you. And so but in that we realize that we're not the ones in control of this. God is. And and so you know the the struggles over man, I mean we thought COVID was nuts, right? And the shutdown, well, it just continues on. Now with the vaccine, what are we going to do with the vaccine? And and I, I, I don't know. I don't have the answers to all of this. All I know is that today I need to walk with the Lord and trust him. And, and uh, let, let's make sure that we do. And so, and then the last thing, and, and this is quick, but... 1 Corinthians 13, talking about the sign gifts. Look, the sign gifts are gone, all right? And, and I know Pentecostal is going to get mad at me for this, but quit acting like a Jew, thinking that you've got to have signs uh, to, to uh, uh, build up your walk. That's not faith, okay? And, and so many want to, to express these things, the prophecy and the speaking in tongues and the healing and and we got to have these to 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 prove that that God is real and God's proven himself to be real. Jesus proved himself to be real when he healed many and and 
uh, showed us that he was the very son of God. And, and, and so we know that. And, and we know that when the word of God was complete, that, that those sign gifts all disappeared because we don't need those. We have the entire word of God in front of us today. And we know the answers and we have the complete, the complete word of God from Adam and Eve to the, to the very beginning or, or completion of salvation in, uh, in the word of God through uh, the book of Revelation. So just quit seeking all these signs and walk by faith and just trust him and, and have faith, hope, and charity. Why don't you focus on those? Instead, of all these sign things that so many people think you gotta have, no, you don't. We, we see God's hand working every day. We wake up and we see the creation itself and know that God's under control. The sun still came up today. Sun's gonna go down tonight. The moon's gonna come out. The stars are there. I, I, I mean, that, that's God and, and he's real. And we know that, we trust him. We watch him do works uh, through our lives and, and we preach the word of God. We see people trust Christ as their savior by sharing the gospel. Every day we see God is real and we don't have to have all those signs. And so just quit looking for all that stuff and just serve God and walk with him. And people keep looking for signs that, well, is this the, is this the end of days? Uh, and I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows that but God himself. And so what do we do? Quit looking for signs. Just walk with God. Just trust him today. And, and we'll see that God will use us greatly. And, and uh, if we get afflicted, it's pretty minor compared to the glories we'll have in eternity. So let's just serve him. Let's walk with him. Let's trust him. And, and let's be what uh, God wants us to be. So that's a... That's a happy thoughts for Friday. And uh, hope you guys have a good day today. Ladies, don't forget if you're in the area, have the ladies luncheon Bible study today at 11, 11 to one. So come on out for that. Guys, we have our men's prayer breakfast in the morning at eight. If you can be there, love for you to be there. And uh, it's just gonna be a, a, a it, it's a, we have, uh, I'm doing Phil and Sydney's wedding tomorrow too. It's just good. You know, there's a lot of good things going on. Quit focusing on the bad. Look at the good things that God's doing. Satan is the master of deception. You might think that God's not doing anything. God is doing plenty. And let's look at the things that God's doing and let's serve him and know that, that uh, he's got all this taken care of and let's just walk with him. So have a great weekend. Don't forget uh, Sunday, family day. Uh, at, at church, we got baby dedication. We got a bunch of kids getting, you know, the parents are dedicating uh, their lives, their children to, to the Lord to serve and uh, raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We're gonna have a picnic afterwards. We have Dr. Jim Shetler preaching. Uh, it's just gonna be a great day. So uh, God bless you guys and come on out Sunday, uh, 9.45, 10.45 and, and love to see you. And like I said, I'm not sure whether I'll be on here Monday or not. Uh, I, I believe I'm going to be gone. I need to take Gary Norris to the airport. So uh, God bless you guys and uh, have, a, have a great day today.